Hello, I'm uh, Tony Mesa with Tony Mesa Real Estate School. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a tax proration. Now, property taxes, when we talk about property taxes in Florida, we're talking about the taxes that are paid on a yearly basis to the local government, the county, the city, the school board. These taxes are paid, one, uh, paid yearly, right, every single year. Uh, completely different from the tax on the deed, the tax on the mortgage, the tax on the note that's paid one time at the closing. So these are your yearly property taxes we're talking about. Now what is a proration and when do you do a proration at a closing? Whenever there's an item at the closing that applies to both the buyer and the seller and a calculation needs to be done to make things fair, that's going to be called a proration and one side will receive a credit, the other side will receive a debit, and we're gonna see what that means in, in a bit, okay? All right, now, the first thing that you need to know before you do uh, a proration is you need to know how many days are in each month of the year. So I have the days in each month of the year up here. Um, I learned this as a child using the knuckle method. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach the camera, this is a first time for me, um, I'm experimenting here. Hopefully this won't be really blurry, but I want to try to show you the knuckle method. Okay, so the knuckle method is, I'm putting my fist up here, right? And the idea is that the first knuckle, uh, that's 31 days in January. The smallest space is 28 days in February. Then knuckle 31 is March, 31 days in March. Space 30, April 30, uh, May 31, uh, June space 30 knuckle July 31. Now what happens is when you put both hands together like this, you get knuckle and knuckle together, right? That's July and August, 31 and 31, right? Then space 30, uh, then knuckle uh, 31, space 30, knuckle 31. So the idea is each space is 30 days except for the smallest space here, which is the 28 days in February and each knuckle is 31 days, right? So that is the knuckle method. Some of you learn the rhyme that's fine. I, I, the rhyme to me doesn't rhyme, so it's not a good memory aid. Um, so what happens here is um, I, I, you do need to, one way or the other, know the exact number of days in each month, okay? Um, on the state exam, you're always using the real number of days in each month unless they tell you in the problem to use the 30-day method. The 30-day method means you pretend that each month even the month of February has 30 days in it. But the only time you use the 30-day method on the state exam is if they specifically tell you to use the 30-day method. If not, you're, you're using the number of days that really uh, each month has, right? All right, now, what is it that happens? The tax bill comes over here in November. So here, if this is January 1 and this is December 31, and let's say we have a closing, uh, I'm gonna say April 10th, right? April 10th, right? Um, before the closing, the owner is going to be the seller. After the closing, the owner is going to be the buyer. Um, the, what happens is when they send you that tax bill, they don't care the property was sold. They're sending it to whoever is the owner at that point in time. So when the owner gets the tax bill here, he is going to pay taxes for the entire year that just went by. Property taxes are paid mostly in arrears if you pay here or if you pay a little bit later, the entire thing in arrears. When you get a tax bill, let me use a specific year. When you get a tax bill in November of 2014 in Florida for your property, you are not paying the taxes for 2015. You're paying the entire, you're paying the taxes for the entire year 2014. So property taxes are not paid in advance, they're paid in arrears, right? Okay, now, so the buyer is gonna pay Let's say we've got 3,650 is a tax for the year. He's gonna get a bill here, he's gonna pay the whole 3,650. It makes sense that the buyer should pay this portion because the buyer is the owner there, but who should be responsible for paying this part over here? That should be the seller's responsibility. The seller owned it for part of the year and they should be responsible for part of the property taxes, right? This, will, this amount will wind up being a credit to the buyer and a debit to the seller. And we're gonna come back to that in a second, okay? The first thing that you need to do is you take $3,650, that's the tax for the year, divided by 365 days in a year. So a year has 365 days in it, right? And again, using my calculator, that is $10 in tax per day, per day, right? 
Now, how many days does the seller own this property? How many days is the seller responsible for it? Okay, the day of closing itself usually belongs to the buyer. What does that mean? That means that the, the, the day of closing, in this case, the 10th, the buyer is now responsible for that day. Even if they close at 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. or whatever, the, the idea is that most standardized contracts and custom is that the buyer will pay for the day of closing. And then if it's a rental property and income com is coming in, the buyer is entitled to the income for the day of closing. Now, on the state exam, the day of closing, if they don't tell you anything, it belongs to the buyer, to the buyer. Um, if they specifically tell you in the question that the day of closing belongs to the seller, then it belongs to the seller, right? But if they don't tell you anything, the day of closing belongs to the buyer, okay? All right, now how many days is the seller responsible for here? 31 days, all of January, plus 28 days, all of February, plus 31 days, all of March, and then if the closing is on the 10th, the seller is responsible for the first nine days in April, right? So 31 plus 28 plus 31 plus 9 gives you 99 days that the seller is responsible for, okay? So 99 days times $10 per day is $990. At the closing, we're going to credit the buyer $990 and we're going to debit the seller $990. Now what does that mean that we credit the buyer $990? We're saying to the buyer bring $990 less to the closing and then when you have to pay the entire bill $3,650 you've already been compensated at the closing for the seller's portion, right? What does it mean we debit the seller $990? That means we're saying to the seller, uh, seller, you own this property for that beginning part of the year, and at the closing, you're gonna walk away with this much less. This money is coming from you, okay? Whenever you have a proration, it is always a credit to one side and a debit to the other side, and it is always the same number. So you see, I'm taking the state exam, and I've got answer choice A, there's a proration problem. I don't care what if it's a property tax proration, a rent proration, uh, assumed interest proration. I'm taking the state exam and there's a proration problem. And it's credit the buyer $1,000 and debit the seller $500. That has to be wrong. Why? Because it's always the same number that one side is credited and the other side is debited when it's a proration problem. So that is a property tax proration. Uh, our website address is TonyMesaRealEstateSchool.com. Thank you very much. Have a great day.